lot going on out there on the internet regarding the iPhone 14 Pro. Depending on who you listen to, this is the greatest device for the 15th year in a row. An unbeaten streak never yet seen in human history. Or it's one of the worst devices out there going in mobile phones. And of course, with everything else on the internet, the truth is somewhere in between. I think where I land on the iPhone 14 Pro after a few days now is that this is a return to form for iPhone. Last year was a bit of a surprise. I didn't think the 13 Pro would be as big of an upgrade over the 12 Pro as it was. But that was one of the first times, I'll tell you the second one in a moment, but that was only the second time that I recommended getting a 13 even if you had a 12 because of the enhanced battery life and the power efficiencies that that device had. It's the first time since the original iPhone and the iPhone 3G that you can absolutely see value in upgrading from one year to the next. But now with the 14, because it's coming in a little underwhelming, it's not the greatest thing in the world. It's not a massive quantum leap over the iPhone 13 Pro. So I feel like that's some of the letdown that people are having with the device. But it's kind of back to what we're used to. If you have a 12 Pro, if you have an 11 if you're coming from an older iPhone device like that, you're absolutely going to enjoy this upgrade. Go ahead and get it. It's going to be fantastic for you. You're going to notice a whole host of things that you didn't have on your previous devices. But if you have an iPhone 13 Pro, this perhaps is not for you. It's not necessary. It's not something that you're going to go ahead and need and notice a whole heck of a lot of difference. And some things, depending, might be slightly worse. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this device. First off, so one of the things that you will notice as a difference over the iPhone 13 Pro is this display. This display is one of the best displays I've ever looked at on a mobile device. It is fantastic. And I, I just pulled out my 13 Pro because that's what I'm filming this on because I film on iPhone. And that display at 85% looked dim compared to this display, which is like staring at the surface of the sun at 85%. If you put it at 100%, you could uh, the outside visibility is fantastic. And it's not just the brightness. It's the color. It's the accuracy. It's the clarity of the device. It's easy on the eyes. Content that you view on this, when you're reading things, it's just so sharp and bright that your eyes thank you when you're looking at it. It is that good of a display. The speakers also share that clarity. Fantastic speakers, even at the low end, which is something that a lot of people ignore. You have it very soft. It's very distinct. You could hear the stuff. You could hear whatever music or video that you're playing. But also, as it gets very loud, it doesn't distort. Absolutely fantastic quality speakers on the device itself. Camera, of course, we're going to have it here. We're going to have some lamb chop here before and after pictures from the grill from this weekend. The camera and the video is top-notch as we've expected from iPhone, really since the iPhone 11 coming out. And now here's the middling part of things. Here's where it gets a little stuff that they've added in that kind of uh, it can go either way. Dynamic Island. At first I thought, oh, I, I was a little disappointed because Dynamic Island at this point is cool. It, it, it obviously is meant to cover up an eyesore. It's something that they put in to give this some differentiation between the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 14, I see that it has potential. There are things that they could do with this in the future that are quite cool, like those sports score things. And as more third-party apps are allowed to play with different things with the Dynamic Island, I think there's a lot there to work with. It, do, it is a little bit more intuitive than I thought it was originally. It's, it's very Apple in that it, it's minimalist. It's there when you need it, and it's not there when you don't, as ex example by this. So let's go into clock, and let's start a timer, okay? So then, just without me doing anything, it knows it needs to be there. And you can see the dynamic aisle in there. And even when I pause the timer, well, I'm still technically using it, right? So when I go up there, it still remains there. But then I go back in, and I cancel out. And then, of course, the iOS says, you know what? You don't need it anymore. It's going to go away. And I, when I saw it there, and you see where it's positioned and how prominent it is, and you can't stop looking at it and staring at it for a while, you kind of want it to do more. But you kind of get how it's very Apple that it's not going to do more unless you really need it to do more. And it works well with the music and the other stuff. And it functions, kind of ties in the music stuff with the always on display, which you got to come up with another name for it. It's just not always on. That the always on display, I haven't come around on. I've come around the Dynamic Island a little bit, but there's always on display I have not. 
It's very distracting. It always looks like the screen is on. If you have it on a car seat next to you, or if you have it in a cup holder and you're driving, it always look like it looks like you just got a notification. In sun, it gets very bright. It looks like the display, like you forgot to lock it. It's very annoying. It, it gets, and then you have it dim in darker environments and you get a text message and you find yourself subconsciously straining to read the message, but because it's so dim and it's not highlighted, you can't read the entire message. So you, you find yourself going through and checking these spam messages and notifications more than you would regularly if you just saw a little indicator of what app had sent you a message. You know, I don't need every YouTube notification for every video I've ever subscribed to. I don't need every Twitter notification. I don't need every text message, all these spam messages that I'm getting. I'd rather just see what app has sent me something down below. A lot of people like it. That's going to be personal preference. For me, it's distracting. It feels like the display is literally always on. I get it. Yes, I know. But at the same time, I don't like getting the full messages. I don't like having the notifications down there to be read because your brain subconsciously wants the information now that it's there and you can't get it. It's more frustrating than just at a glance information that you would get on a typical always on display. Battery life is where we start to get kind of to the other end. It's not as good as the iPhone 13 Pro. A lot of people are saying that's an issue with iOS 16, that there is some battery drain on the iPhone 13 Pros. Now, I didn't experience it, certainly not as much as on here. The idle drain was terrible the first day, really downright bad. So it's gotten a little bit better. Today has been the best day so far. I'm going to get overly six hours of screen on time, easily six hours of screen on time, which is quite good. So I saw a lot of people online saying, oh, well, you know, I, the battery on the iPhone is bad now. I was like, well, it's bad. Okay, it's bad for iPhone. It's bad for the iPhone 13 Pro. But if you put that in perspective, the very best that the Samsung Galaxy S22 has to, uh, Ultra has to offer on battery life, a device that I love, by the way, is still the top range is going to be the worst, okay, the worst so far that the iPhone 14 Pro has to offer. That, that five and a half hour range is the top end of the S22 Ultra, whereas so far the bottom end of the iPhone 14 Pro. Hopefully this improves. Listen, they got to get it done. They got to get it done. If there is something they could do, you know, all these efficiencies that they tout, all this money that people pay, you can't go backwards on battery life. I understand that you're better than everybody else, but that doesn't give you a pass to just take a step back. We got used to that. I never was in a place where I would just wail on my iPhone and just use it for everything and not have to worry about battery. I was at that place with the iPhone 13 Pro. I was telling you, I was doing turn by turn navigation, four hours on screen. On display, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, it only used 50% of battery. On an Android, I have to plug that in. So don't take that back from me now. That would annoy me. You know, if you, if you have some efficiency issues, if you have some optimization issues with iOS 16, get it sorted. Because that's something that people are going to want to use, they got used to, and we certainly pay for. So the other things with iOS 16, I saw... You know, here's the difference between... And I, I say this for the end of the video... Because I, I don't want people to, I, I don't like comparing Android to iPhone. Certainly not Pixel to iPhone and stuff like that. The people who spent their money on a Pixel don't care about iPhone and vice versa. But I see a lot online that people are saying, well, see, you know, Google had problems with their, with their launch of the Pixel 6 and iPhone's having problems too. I can't, but here's the difference. When I got my Pixel 6, the problems were I couldn't unlock the thing. The thing would crash. System UI would crash. It would do hard resets. The, the, some of the errors that people were talking about with the iPhone was that, well, I saw one error that said, oh, well, the raw mode, the pro raw mode was only taking 39 megapixels. I was like, well, <laughs> it's like, that's the errors that you get on iOS 16. And I'll tell you what, within a week or two, listen, they need to be fixed. If it's a feature, it should work. But within a week or two, it'll probably be fixed. That's usually the difference between what happens with iOS and what happens with Android so far that I can see some Android manufacturers. eSIM was bad to start. First half of the day was not pretty for a lot of people. I didn't have an issue. I was a little later in the day, though. I got mine about 2.30. Booted it up, activated it. Within seconds, I was on. Is it annoying for a lot of people? Yeah. For a lot of people, I mean enthusiasts. The regular consumer, the person who is just coming from their iPhone 8, they're going to go into the store and say, hey, can you set this up for me? Yeah, here you go. Yeah, I'll see you in three or four years. Okay, you come back in and we'll, we'll redo it. They don't worry about it. They're not pulling a SIM out of anything. They've never even seen a SIM in their life. And un Apple understands that that's who their consumer is for the large majority of their profits and their sales, okay? So for a lot of people, I understand enthusiasts, tech people, people on YouTube, if you just like having multiple phones, you like using iPhone and Android, the eSIM thing is a pain for you, you like having a SIM tray, 90X percent of the amount of people, not going to care. 
really for the most part. Other things with the camera, I didn't have that jumping camera problem. I only used it in Instagram. I didn't really have an issue with that. People were having the jolting camera on TikTok and Snap, uh, Snapchat and Instagram. I don't know if those are, are app-specific things with the API, not work, whatever it happens to be. If the apps need to be updated, if iOS uh, 16 needs to be updated, whatever it is, they'll get it sorted out. I, I, listen, is, is it fantastic? Is it everything and then some? Is it the greatest phone ever? No. Is it disappointing? I don't think so. It's not something, it's not the smoothest launch that Apple's ever had. When you talk about battery life, they need to fix it. Mine is, is decent enough so far, but I, I kind of land in the middle on it. And that's where I've landed on a lot of new iPhone releases in previous years, with the exception of last year. If you have an older iPhone, older than the 12 Pro, you're going to like it. You're going to notice the changes. If you're an Apple person, you're going to like it. If you have an iPhone 13 Pro, don't bother. Don't bother. And that's not the end of the world. You know, that's not something I'm going to eat their lunch for. It's not something I'm going to I'm going to crow and, and jump up and down about like last year with the 13 Pro. So, uh, like I said, like with everything in the internet, the truth is somewhere in between. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know your experiences down below in the comment section. If you have it, how your battery life has been. I've seen some stories about the battery life being really good. Uh, I have not had that. I've had kind of middling battery, at least uh, compared to my 13 Pro. So until next time, have that Steve Delicious day.